Welcome in to our next round table. Bill Priestley here along with Anthony Smith, Tony Mulvey. We're going to do what we do once a quarter, which is to go through our second quarter earnings or these quarterly earnings reports. And we've gone through a bunch of these gentlemen just to kind of get an idea of where companies are. As you talked about, are we in a recession? Are we not in a recession just moments ago? And just from a corporate perspective, taking a look at how things went in the second quarter. And we're leading off here with Best Buy. Uh, and uh, Corey Berry, Best Buy CEO, said as high inflation has, has continued and consumer sentiment has deteriorated. Customer demand within the consumer electro electronics industry has softened even further, leading to Q2 financial results below the expectations we shared in May. And Tony, you saw this and, and you jumped all over it. Yeah, I mean, so the thing to remember with the retailers that we cover, most of them haven't, their quarter ends this week. They, they're on a little different than these transportation companies that are reported. So these are pre-announcements getting ahead of things. But it doesn't really surprise me. I think when you saw the stimulus that poured in, where people turned that money to was these discretionary items, electronics, they upgraded their TVs, their refrigerator, things that Best Buy sells. And now they're durable goods, right? And you don't need to go buy them all that often. And that's kind of what's drying up. Mm -hmm. Moving on, let's move to Walmart here, who also uh, had, had interesting news there as well. Uh, this quote a little bit truncated, so let me read the entire thing. The increasing levels of food and fuel inflation are affecting how con customers spend. And while we've made good progress clearing hardline categories, apparel in Walmart US is in the US is requiring more markdown dollars. We're anticipating more pressure on general merchandise in the back half. However, we're encouraged by the start of what we're seeing on school supplies in Walmart US. That's Doug McMillan, Walmart Incorporated President and CEO. Uh, impressions here? Uh, not too much of a surprise here either. I think there's going to be a lot of pressures on really being able to create enough inventory or enough space in the inventory to be able to move some of these timely goods. Um, there might be some type of deflationary pressures as some of these items get discounted, get pushed out so we can make room for it. But there's also going to be inflationary pressures as we try to get some of these timely goods back on shelves. And this question relates a little bit to the inventory issues that we see, saw here in a lot of big box stores. Target we talked about in their first quarter earnings, and certainly that's reflected in, in a bunch of these others as well. Moving on, let's jump into transportation and CSX. This one got my attention. Uh, I know it got a lot of people's attention as uh, president and CEO. You know, Jim Foote mentioned to investors, we're in great shape to handle what, whatever traffic comes to us. We only have one restriction right now, and it's crews. And we're doing everything we possibly can do to hire as many people as we can. Anthony, this reflects what we were talking about in terms of uh, the baby boomer generation retiring, and all of a sudden now CSX said they're operating at about 6,700 workers. They should be at about 7,000 workers, and they want to be a little bit farther past that. And this just uh, alludes to that issue. Definitely, and I think this is going to be an ongoing thing, and it will be interesting to see if this current recession that we're in, if it drags out and if financial markets really take a turn, we start to see some boomers, baby boomers, start to return from retirement and get back into the workforce if they're on that earlier part of it. I don't know if that's going to be the case, but nonetheless, there's still going to be that brain drain issue as we see a lot of experienced individuals that leave the industry permanently. All right, moving on to C.H. Robinson. And Tony, I know you were excited to look at this. Uh, our strong results, again, were driven by significant operating margin expansion in our North American surface transportation business. As we further improved the profitability of our truckload and less than truckload business and grew our truckload volume in a declining market. And that is their CEO, Robert Boosterfield. Tony. Yeah, I mean, it was a great quarter. And when you start to dig in kind of what they were talking about, they talked about Prices that their consumer or their customers paid, so the shipper customers paid 2% higher in the quarter. What their costs were were down 5% in the quarter. So there's that margin that they're they're mm -hmm. banking on. And guess what? Results in a good quarter. Yep. Moving on, uh, size revenue per shipment included fuel trails out of Old Dominion by nearly $100. And uh, their president CEO said that uh, the that can continue to raise pricing even though the even though they're on the downside of a cycle, uh, the pace may be slow, but I don't see any opportunity that has gone away. And he says, uh, uh, Holtzgriff says that I think we can still grow through this. Going to be possible through someone that's running a large operation here. I don't think this is going to be the case for smaller operations or owner ops and things like that. Yeah. Moving on to Old Dominion, uh, this is another LTL. A less than truckload carrier achieved a watershed moment in the industry, posting a 69.5% operating ratio or 30.5% 30, 30 operating margin during the period. 
and their uh, president and CEO, Greg Gant. So far, we haven't seen much, if any at all, of any customers asking for cheaper rates or any kind of exception pricing. From what we can tell, the industry is extremely disciplined. So obviously, they're like their position right now, Tony. Yeah, and they should. I mean, yeah. you're talking sub-70 OR in the LTL market. Nobody thought that was possible, right? But you think about who LTLs kind of geared towards, it, it falls more in that industrial production, industrial segment. You talked about it. We hadn't seen it until this latest month, right? That any slowdown, and it wasn't a significant one. And that's why the LTL providers are pretty much set up a little better than maybe the truckload carrier in this, at least in the initial parts of this slowdown in the economy. And of course, we've seen large carriers tend to benefit in these types of times. LTL, obviously, all across the board, seemed to have done really, really well. Yep. Uh, moving on to the internet and Shopify. This one caught some people off guard. Some people weren't caught off guard. Um, when uh, they said, we now expect 2022 will end up being different, more of a transition year in which e-commerce has largely reset to the pre-COVID trend line and is now pressured by persistent high inflation. Uh, this is going to be an interesting situation. Shopify laid off 10% of its employees. Yep. I'll let Anthony kind of touch on this too, but you think about this trend in e-commerce that we saw because of the pandemic, we pulled a lot of that demand forward for e-commerce, right? And Shopify was the beneficiary, and now they're gonna get hurt as we reset. Are we going back to pre-pandemic levels? I don't know, I doubt it. But, I mean, it's definitely this reversal uh, that they've experienced the boom, now it's gonna be kind of a bust. Okay, Anthony? Uh, there is over 7 million job openings in the U.S., and we have back-to-back -back quarters of decline here and now we're in a recession. And so if we can really have a recession during near record levels of job openings, it can get much more worse if there are not record levels in, of job openings. So we're starting to see these companies start to lay off individuals. This is start to be another shift in some further downward movement as fewer people have jobs, fewer opportunities to trade up in employment. Right now they can still kind of act on it, but this I think could be the potential turning point right now that we're seeing in the jobs market. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting to watch over the course of the next uh, three quarters, as you mentioned. Uh, moving back into transportation, Covenant, uh, one of our local neighbors here, Chattanooga-based Covenant, um, our CEO, David R. Parker, saying for the second half of 2022, we expect moderating freight demand, great driver availability, and continuing cost inflation. Uh, they're they're uh, bullish. Yeah, and, and I mean, it was a great quarter. And you mm -hmm. think about, you once you start digging in, I mean, we've talked about it on carrier updates, the fuel benefit that they have. And you look at, I mean, they generate about $50 million in revenue just from fuel itself. So, I mean, it's, a, it's definitely a tailwind for a company like this, but you're also seeing the improvements that they've made operationally. Mm -hmm. uh, moving on to Landstar, freight broker Landstar system has seen pricing moderate since the spot market's decline near the early second quarter. Revenue per mile for dry lands ho dry, for dry van loads hauled by its business capacity owners fell six percent sequentially in both April and May, but it's held steady since. And then you look at the real numbers, uh, loads, hold, or excuse me, loads hold by truck were expected to increase by 11 to 13 percent year over year with revenue truck loads expected to climb by mid, uh, mid teen percentage year over year, both metrics up by 10 percent. Where you kind of start to see brokerages really be able to be somewhat successful um, during times that there's transitory or transitions and um, the freight markets. Yeah, I mean, this is another one. It, if you start to see the actual numbers, you see how the spot market has kind of affected some of these companies, right? Those more spot exposed are turning out worse earnings than those that are really heavy contract, which is not a surprise. Mm -hmm. uh, Heartland Express, freight demand in the second quarter of 2022 softened sequentially to the first quarter of 2022, the CEO Mike Gurdon said in the news release. And they said, while the current levels are down compared to the unprecedented levels experienced in the latter months of 2021, we continue to have significantly more opportunities to haul freight than we are to, to, able to cover with our existing fleet and available drivers. This is one of those situa very few situations we're seeing now where we got too much work. This is going to be one, of course, um, Tony hit on it a little bit earlier, but there's still going to be tons of stuff that we have to work through. Mm. There is a backlog. There is a pull forward. There is a pull forward with e-commerce. There is a pull forward with some industrial segments as well. But I think um, the supply chain is still definitely going to be uh, a lot of tightness and just getting stuff moved, getting things in the right position. And Heartland specific. I mean, they're very disciplined. If you always look at their OR, they don't really ever... They, they run very well, and that and I think that helps in a situation where we're talking about, I mean, they said it, in the sequential decline in demand, it may not be a lot, 
but it's a little, and it's the start of it. And I think that's the key. It's is this a trend? And it's it's from Q1 to Q2 is the start. Where do we go from here? We'll see. But I mean, they run well, and that that helps their results in this transition period. Yeah, let's let's jump back to uh, the the larger e-commerce giant Amazon. Inventory levels increased 58% over the past year. That's no surprise to anyone. Uh, but despite current uh, continued infl inflationary pressures and fuel, energy, and transportation costs, we're making progress on the more controllable costs we referenced last quarter, particularly improving the productivity of our fulfillment network. That's Andy Jassy, Amazon CEO. Um, Getting back in the e-commerce uh, segment here, and they're looking, uh, you know, trying to, to, to weather the storm, it looks like. Yeah, and, and I mean, another good quarter. I mean, if you listen to what their management team said, it's going to be a bumpy road in terms of profitability, right? They're trying to make all these changes. This is, you look at their loss, but you look at their revenues just blowing estimates out of the water. Result, stock price goes way up. I mean, up 12% today. Yeah, I was just going to mention that to you. Yeah, so, I mean, it's it's not a surprise. They they know how to, they're big, and they run really efficient as well. Jumping into the uh, air category, forward air. And uh, I would say if there's a recession, bring it on, says Tom Schmidt, chairman, president, and CEO. Oftentimes, it feels like waiting for something is more scary than the event itself. And uh, they're bullish as well on the future. Yeah, I mean, you look at, I mean, one of the things that stood out to me, a 40% jump in revenue per shipment, bolstered by much of fuel, fuel surcharge really helped that. So it's not, revenue per shipment didn't increase by that much, as much as fuel surcharge is helping it. And we see it every morning in carrier updates, right? And yeah. So, but should be bullish. I mean, for them, they've gone through some of this transformation as a company to kind of weather some of these storms. So we'll see we'll see what happens, but I would the larger carriers I'm not as concerned about as the small guys. Yeah, um, and jumping as we wrap up this uh, edition of uh, earnings reports, jumping to Apple, uh, back into consumer electronics. And with Apple, obviously we got a lot here, but uh, outside of iPhone sales, Apple product sales were soft compared to last year. As Mac sales declined 10% over year, iPad sales were down 2%, wearables, home, and accessory sales were down 7.9% year over year. Obviously they're making money with their services, uh, which is, you know, good for them, but at the same time, this, again, is a continuing trend here for Apple. Yeah, it's kind of a look at the consumer, right? I mean, they're spending money on phones, but some of those discretionary items, right? A Mac computer, an iPad, an Apple Watch, things like that, they're not spending as much money, especially here in the U.S. Anthony? Closely here. Um, one of the areas that I really kind of draw attention to is, of course, consumer spending, credit card utilization, buy now, pay later. Apple's starting to implement a buy now, pay later, or pay over time program. And so that growth in services is where they want to be. But it's also potentially detrimental to a lot of consumers that might be over encumbered with potential debt and different types of uh, financial um, things that they have to really kind of honor. So this could be a potential one that, yeah, they're going to be able to benefit from it. But I think a lot of folks might find out that they maybe have over themselves potentially. Anthony, second consecutive quarter of declining GDP. Does what we did what we see here kind of mesh with what you're seeing as far as the entire economy is concerned? Uh, I think some parts. I mean, when you look at things outside the logistics specifically, of course, Shopify and the layoffs, things like that, Apple's really starting to um, churn up on their services. I think that's exactly what these companies are looking to do. Um, and so I'm not too surprised by all that. Definitely going to be interested to see how what type of stamina some of the logistics sides has because, as you mentioned, um, in the air uh, air cargo one, that mm -hmm. there can be growth here. Um, doesn't need to be that there's going to be decline across the board. Honey, real quick, you're surprised by anything we saw here? No, not at all. I mean, you look at Walmart, their pre-announcement. I think that kind of tells the broader economy. You look at, at Chipotle and McDonald's also talking about consumers trading down and visiting less often. Not really a surprise. All right. Thank you very much, gentlemen. We'll take a short break, and we'll come back and wrap up our show right after this.